Anna. I'm the children's librarian at the Goldsboro Library. And every week during summer reading, I'm going to talk to you just for a couple minutes um, about some different things that you can do at home with your baby or small toddler to help build some foundational literacy skills. So even though your children are really small, we can do things at home with them that will um, help them build some good skills so they will be ready to be good readers when they get bigger. So luckily, even though these things are very, very important, they're also really easy. And probably um, a lot of them you're already doing at home. So um, yeah, so singing, talking, reading, playing, all of these things are so, so important to build literacy skills with your children. And we'll talk about why over the next several weeks. So today we're going to talk um, a little bit about reading and why it's so important um, and why it's important to do with very small children. So um, one of my favorite things to do with my job is story time. So um, whenever the library can do story time in person again, or if you're watching our story times at home, or if you're just with your child reading at home, um, story time is a really good time to bond with your baby or small child and really kind of develop your close positive, loving relationship with them. So if you're holding them in your lap, holding them close, reading a book with them, um, singing with them, playing with them, helping them learn how to clap, all of these things. Um, even if your child can't read because they're very small, even if they can't talk yet, even if they can't even sit up without assistance yet, all of these things that you're doing with them are helping them to build skills that they need later on. So story time is a really good time to do that because not only are you building an emotional bond, um, helping them work on some different physical skills with doing motions and clapping and things like that, but also helping them to build their vocabularies and to help them associate reading with something positive. So if a child feels safe and loved, they, their brains are just like... All right, got that. I'm ready to learn. So if they're feeling comfortable with you and feeling good at story time, they are just soaking up what's happening around them. So it's really good to have that positive association with reading. Um, so I was going to have my assistant here, but she was not cooperative. She's not quite two yet. So you might see her in some future weeks. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about reading, um, with very small children. So even if you're reading, um, books like this one, uh, board books that have very few pages or very few words per page, like this one only has like one or two words, um, on each page, you can still get a lot out of it. And kind of the most most important thing uh, with very small children is helping them to understand uh, the world around them and make connections uh, between things that they see and kind of understanding what's going on and what things are. So for us as adults, if we see this says garden, we know what a garden is. We know what a garden looks like. Um, your child may or may not have seen a garden before, but um, seeing these like squiggles on the page and kind of understanding that they mean something and they're talking about a thing that the child may have seen before. It's kind of a Ugh, it doesn't make sense. That's difficult, right? So we want to read to our children so eventually they will understand that these squiggles actually mean something and they're explaining the world around them and you can learn from books. So we want to share as many books and words and sounds and things with our children while they're very young um, because it kind of helps them make connections with their world and to build their vocabulary. So if you've never heard a word, you're not going to know what it is and you're not going to know what it's talking about if you see it written down when you're older. So um, if my assistant was here, I would get her to help me, but I'll just kind of give you some examples of things you can do with your books. So even though this book is very short, you can kind of go in a lot of different directions when you're reading it with your very small child. So this book is called Rapunzel. You could say, oh, well, here's the front of the book. We hold it this way. Here's the back of the book, but we start this way and we open it like this. Huh? What do you see on this page? Here's a man and a woman, uh, maybe a mommy and a daddy. We've got a chair. Do you have a chair in your room? What color is the chair in your room? We're sitting in the chair in your room. It's blue. Um, here's a kitty cat sitting in your chair, sitting in the chair. What color is that kitty cat? It's a blue kitty cat. Have you ever seen a blue kitty cat? Do blue kitty cats live here? 
we don't have a kitty cat, but we have a dog. What color is our dog? What is our dog's name? See, that doesn't even really have anything to do with the story, but you can kind of go off on tangents just by using the pictures in your book. Um, so that's just an example of things that you could do with very short books or very short books like this with your small children. And they'll have a really short attention span and you don't even know if they're listening or paying attention or understanding what you're saying, but it's all right. As long as they're hearing words and hearing sounds, you're doing good. All right, so that's all we've got for reading this week. So I'll see you next week and we'll talk about singing. All right, see you later.